So Kevin and I talk a lot about cultural trajectories and kind of where we're at, where we're going, like what's the logical conclusion to stuff. And you said the evergreen of today doesn't have the same promise that it did when you originally went there, right? And so, you know, there is this kind of thing that we've talked about and heard talk, this evergreening of America, you know, what was the, the article? We all live on campus now. Um, heard Brett say the same kinds of things. So if we were going to take the, the idea of comparing the, the West or let's do America, right? Because America is the center of everything and the center of the world, the most important place ever, right? <laughs> Sarcasm. But, um, and compare that. I'd to rather evergreen. US than China, tell you the truth. So let's that's just... true. That's, yeah. I mean, that's a whole nother can of worms. But, um, but so would you say that that same, if we were to take the model of Evergreen, what happened there and how it played out, and that story is still being written, right? Like they haven't learned. So they're going to keep doing what they're doing, in, at least in some new way. And it seems like America and what's going on in our institutions right now is on a similar trajectory. So would you say that if you were to look at what Evergreen's doing right now and how it doesn't have the same promise it did even you know, less than a decade ago, would you apply that same lens or at least as you conceptualize America or the West or the American experiment the same way would you say what we're doing right now in terms of following that same kind of path that with this ideology, um, you know, want to call it wokeism or mm. critical theory is part of it. You know, I, I call it far left orthodoxy because it just, it's such, it's a religion that has all of these different ortho, ortho, orthodoxical tenets. Um, mm. Would you say we don't have the same promise as we did even a short time ago? Well, I mean, you get to the field of America and the, potentiality within America is much more vast than the potentiality of some small little crusty, crunchy, mossy liberal art, arts college in the woods. So the promise and the possibility of America is still wide open. If you're talking about like the entertainment industry, if you're talking about established um, sides of our society, such as the media, the established media, the established government, the established this, the established that, the, the possibility is being strangulated out of it because of a morality uh, that can't handle risk. Um, it's very risk adverse and it's creating people that are also very risk adverse, otherwise known as snowflakes, people who are very, I mean, the uh, American Booksellers Association just released a series of tweets apologizing for the violence that they enacted by sending out a list of recommended books that included Abigail Schreier's Irreversible Damage, which is a, which is a book that explores the, um, the consequences of uh, of transgender ideology specifically as it is manifesting within young women uh, adolescent and pubescent girls and just the lengths to which this ideology will take them uh, mentally and physically and that book just explores that and does have a bias to say that mutilating healthy body parts is probably not a good idea if it can be avoided. And here are all the ideas and it looks through all the ideas, but the American Booksellers Association just put out a tweet, I think it was yesterday, about how violent that was that they recommended that. So if hmm. those ideas in that tonality, and Abigail Schreier is a very, very intelligent, very fair woman, uh, very smart and detail oriented and checked and rechecked all of her facts for that book. She is a conservative, right? So she does have a, a point of view on this and, and she is a mother too. So she has a daughter. So she does have some stake in this for sure. But that somebody like that is being uh, construed as a violent person. What does that do with the possibility inherent in any sort of fruitful dialogue about these issues with regards to these official organizations, every single official organization, whether it's uh, some sort of um, Ubuntu or Linux coding uh, collective or whatever, any anything that has a collective nature and has some sort of documents that say that it, this is a collective uh, that is about this, that, or the other activity from knitting clubs to book clubs, et cetera. They are all prone to being infected by what we call wokeness or this sort of uh, orthodoxy that has at its core a very um, risk adverse 
harmed harm uh, harm mongering uh, inclination to say that certain things are not just off the table or unacceptable but they are actually actively violent and destructive and erase people's existence so that that kind of modality of thought which is uh, i think is actually evolutionarily adapted to infecting organizations that stuff is everywhere and wherever it is it's sapping the potential out of the organization itself and then anybody who participates in that organization. Um, it, in the very least, it causes drag insofar as everybody has to watch what they say for a very shallow reason, just, uh, just on the basis of offense. Um, and then also it gums up everybody in all these diversity, equity, and inclusion interminably long um, what training sessions or indoctrination sessions, where which doesn't actually produce anything other than people navel gazing about these really big societal issues such as systemic racism or implicit bias, which are both like you're talking about God or you're talking about the soul in either one of those directions. So they have basically boxed in the entire world and all of society into a very unpromising potential leeching um, kind of rubric. But you can always go outside yeah. there. Nobody's going to stop you from making a podcast until you get kicked off, you know. So, yeah, they're, they're coming around. Yeah. Cancel culture does exist. But you can still go off and do your own thing. So the potential of America as a whole, the potential of the West as a whole is up to the people who want to be adventurers and be risk uh, unadverse and go out there and try to make it on their own and, and do the experiment and fail a bunch of times until you figure out something that other people want. Totally. Yeah, I mean, it, the just – a thought I just had was it's yes, the American, I get a uh, promise of adventure is still out there, but that kind of that eggshells thing you're talking about that since so much, so much of our institutions and societies infected with this, I had a, a piece that um, James put on new discourses called the road to hell is paved with eggshells. And I wrote about how everyone is in this environment, you know, where they're walking on eggshells, similar to being in an emotionally abusive relationship. So the, the ability, my point is, is that the ability to um, follow through with that promise is increasingly gummed up, like you said, as, you know, to the degree in which you have to interface with certain institutions or certain credentialing mechanisms or whatever, or even just tech, as you alluded to, um, in order to pursue that promise. Like it's, it's not so much the open road in front of you, but you're, it's, it's that minefield, um, you know, kind of covered in these eggshells you have to avoid. But, but anyway, that's, that's just an aside. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to rely on the infrastructure as it is given at this point, because yep. the infrastructure is captured. So. Yep.